how do you become an electrician? This is the question I get asked all the time. And to become an electrician, it's not easy. It does take time. So even if you've worked in the electrical, electrical industry for a number of years and got a shed load of experience, unfortunately, if you haven't got that bit of paper that says you're qualified, a lot of companies, a lot of building companies, should I say, are not gonna recognize you as being qualified. They're just gonna see you as a laborer. That's an unfortunate thing about it, so you've gotta get your bit of paper. And to get that bit of paper from City Guilds, from NAPIT, from some sort of training governing body, you've got to do exams. You've got to train to pass them exams. And they're not easy as well, because you've got to know the fundamentals of how everything works. You've got to know what cable sizes to put in. You've got to know how RCBOs work. You've got to know how MCBs work, why MCBs work. And everything into detail, these may, minor, minor, major things may sound like they're not worth it. You put an MCB in, it protects the cable, and that's it, you put a socket in, it's, it's easy as that. It's not really, because the reason why we are electricians and why we class ourselves as electricians because we know why things go in. We know what size cable to put in, what size fuses, and if someone's gonna be running an oven, we know what size materials to put in for that appliance. And that's the things you've got to know to be able to work as an electrician. You can't just say, yeah, I work with this guy, and uh, yeah, he used to put 1.5s in for all these sockets, because all they were plugging in was lights. Well doesn't matter what if one day they were plugging in toasters kettles because some people I've been to it before where they've changed their living room they've changed the bungalow maybe round in the living room it's now we're going to become the kitchen and they say right yeah we can, we've got a socket in that room we're fine we can run everything off that not necessarily in the kitchen mate you've got a lot more appliances that, and it pulls a lot more juice it's the same scenario if they're going to change if they're going to add onto their kitchen sorry a utility room yeah we just got a few more sockets in there not necessarily, because what are you going to put in that utility room? You're going to put a tumble dryer. You're going to put things that are going to pull a bit of juice. So when I say juice, I mean voltage and amps. They're going to pull a, a lot more power. So you can't just run maybe a 16 amp supply into that utility room. It's not going to work efficiently, and it's not going to work for the longer period of time. It might work for a little while, things do. Things work for a little while, but then eventually they melt. Especially if someone normally sees that hang about, it's tripping the fuse. What's the easiest scenario for tripping a fuse? If it's a 16 amp fuse, stick it to a 32. Well hang about, can you stick it to a 32? Has it got the right size cabling for you to, for you to be able to stick it on a 32 amp fuse? Uh, what is weird why people do this I understand why they just think yeah, that's a quick fix so many people do it if it's tripping upgrade the fuse that'll be good I've spent £10 on a new RCBO so that's going to be fine that's what I need to spend not necessarily you need to spend your money to get an electrician to come out to do it properly so to become an electrician it's not easy you've got to get your qualifications and the qualifications are not just for you to say the bit of paper to say yes I'm a qualified it's an advantage to, to yourself I always remember when I did my full motorbike license I thought oh, I can ride a motorbike why do I need to do a license it would be stupidly easy but doing that license it taught me how to be aware aware of all the other traffic on the road because yeah it's bleeding dangerous these days riding a motorbike on any dual carriageway, any motorway, any country road. So it taught me how to be aware to look over my shoulders all the time and like lifesavers they call them and use your mirrors. I never used to ride motorbikes with mirrors because it looked cooler. You put your mirrors on. It makes it, it makes it easier to see a car coming or even another bike that's gonna be tanking along. You might be going along on a CBR 600, but this guy might be coming on a 1200 and he will overtake you. So you gotta be able to see that guy coming in the mirror to be able to move out of the way. So there's a reason why we do this training, not just for that bit of paper, but to be able to teach you how to be a safe electrician, how to install electrics into customers' houses, because that's the reason why you get paid. You can't just turn up to someone's house 
and say, yeah, I'm an electrician, and you might do their sockets. You've got to be able to say, right, they're gonna be happy with this situation, it's gonna last forever. It's gonna be certified. A lot of the times these days, you've got to certify things like the EICRs for insurance purposes, especially in HMOs, in rented properties. So people need that bit of paper as well to pass on, because that bit of paper makes you responsible for that insulation. Unfortunately, it's a bummer and I hate it sometimes because people phone me up and go, oh, this has happened, that's happened, and you knit around there, and because yeah, you, you've extended it yourself, you pillock, and you've done a little bit of work yourself. You thought you had a socket, so you run a little bit of um, two five cable off of that ring man and then put two heaters into it. Doesn't work like that, you can't do that. This is the whole reason why you call an electrician to do it, because you wonder why this cable's melted. You've got to chase out that wall, it's just, there's so many scenarios that I can guarantee you that electricians have been to where maybe a cowboy, we call them, that aren't maybe qualified, that have done the job themselves. And it all goes tits up. So if you want to be an electrician, get your papers first. Get your qualifications first. Do some training. Make sure you know what's required of you to be an electrician, to be a qualified electrician, to be a safe electrician. Get out there, get down to your local college, see what training they can do, and get qualified. See you again.